Hello everyone. Welcome to my lecture on topic 8 of unit 3. It is discriminating monopoly or price discrimination. So our discussion will be regarding discriminating monopoly or price discrimination. This is a concept where the charging the firms charge different prices for the same commodity or same prices for dis different commodities is called as price discrimination or discriminative monopoly monopoly the monopolist which charge different prices to different customers take the advantage of difference in customer profiles with respect to age education income etc or basically the types of discrimination will be um, with respect to personal aspects, with respect to geographical aspects or with respect to and with respect to uh, on the basis of the usage of the products or services. Now if we go by with this personal aspects, discrimination on personal aspects, so different prices are charged for different individuals based on their incomes and willingness to pay. Examples like a doctor fees that is charged towards the patients with high income and with low income will be that there will be a certain difference in aspects. So the, uh, the, uh, the patients with high income group will be charged with high fee and the patients with low income group will be charged with a low fee etc. Similarly, Railways charges, char railways also charge different fares to different customers, products and services. So these are the few simple examples where the price discrimination is being uh, followed by the firms on personal aspects, with respect to personal aspects. Now coming to the geographical aspects, the same product here, the firms are going to charge different prices for the same products at different places, depending upon the place where they are making those products available and price discrimination on the basis of usage of the customers will be that is a firm tends to charge a monopoly a firm tends to charge different prices according to their usage the very simple and best example on day to day basis is electricity electricity charges for domestic consumption as well as your commercial consumption, the slab rates will be different depending upon the usage, right? So this is how the price discrimination will be followed by the firms based upon these three aspects. Now, what are the conditions that leads to price discrimination is when the customers are separated by distance or tariffs, this is one situation. When customers have certain special preferences, when the government rules and regulations permit, uh, permit discrimination uh, that can be implemented by the monopoly firms, customers' ignorance and lethargy can also be taken as an advantage by the monopolist you know, for, for uh, implementing or for following the price discrimination aspect. And market imperfections is one condition and special orders by customers are another condition for price discrimination followed by the monopolist. Under all the above condition, monopolist charge different prices to different customers. Now on these conditions which give for, uh, for the advantages that are on account of this price discrimination, there are certain advantages or the benefits reaped by the firms like Price discrimination helps the firms to earn more revenue or generate more revenues for the firm which helps the organization to uh, establish the business by earning huge revenues and the same huge revenues facilitates the expansion plans of the organization and it helps in surplus production which can also be disposed of, surplus production if at all it is there. Production cost may be decreased due to increase in the volume of production due to economies of scales. 
and can also make best utilization of the resources by the firms on account of this particular um, uh, strategy that is price discrimination. So the next concept we are going to deal with the price output determination under discriminating monopoly. So by price discrimination is possible and profitable only if elasticities are different in different markets. So this basically this price discrimination is depending upon the uh, elasticities of demand of the market where the products are made available. So monopolist charges high prices with elasticity is low and low prices with elasticity is high. Elasticity is low is an indication where with a slight change in the price there will be uh, uh, there will not be much change in the quantity demand that is responsive change in the quantity demanded is comparatively low with respect to the proportionate change in the prices that is a uh, elast low elasticity situation. Now when the elasticity is high is for a given change in the price or increase in the price, there, uh, the change in the price, there is a comparatively more change in the quantity consumed or the more quantity demanded for those goods and services. Such situation we call it as elasticity to be high in such cases. It is illustrated in the following diagram. Here the three different diagrams are being displayed on the screen for you. This diagram 1 indicates the market 1. M1, this is market 2, this is market 1 plus market 2, this is a combined market. So in the market, this market 1 is an indicate, is a inelastic market, that is the quantity consumed is less, so how we can determine the inelasticity of the market is, by this average revenue, the, so, uh, the fast steeping down of the average revenue as well as your marginal revenue, right? So coming to the next market, that is, uh, mark, uh, second market is represented as elastic market, that uh, how you can uh, analyze that market to be an elastic is with the observance of this average revenue curve, it slopes down slantly, right? Similarly, this man, uh, average uh, marginal revenue curves also slope down slantly. So this particular, this uh, third one, third market is a combined market of both elastic market as well as an inelastic market. If we go by this one, this a small kink in the beginning of the demand curve is observed here for both the lines that is AR, that is average revenue and marginal revenue curve. So here from there again there is a slanting of this curve gradually and slanting of this curve also gradually it is observed here. Now this first instance we called it as ED is less than 1 and the next slant we next point after uh, next uh, stretch we call it we refer it as ED is greater than 1. This is inelasticity and this is elastic elastic conditions. Now here we are going to uh, take into consideration this marginal cost as well as a marginal cost curve. So marginal cost curve is passing through the marginal revenue curve giving rise to a point of intersection here at point E. Let us assume this we called it as a equilibrium point. Point E is an equilibrium point. It, it uh, cuts both the marginal revenue curve as well as the average revenue curve like this. Now from taking this point of intersection, if you drop a line perpendicular to x-axis, we are going to get the quantity, cons quantity uh, consumed or demanded. From the same point, if you extend one more line upwards like this, touching this average revenue curve, this is a 
point where it is touching revenue curve and a perpendicular line to the y axis is drawn here determining the price right now this is the price in the combined market where the, the situation of elastic elasticity and inelasticity is considered now from this point of intersection of equilibrium prime point you extend the line passing through all the markets like this all the uh, extension of the line a straight line is uh, falling uh, perfectly parallel to the x axis right now that straight line indicates the marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost it is it is a minimum condition a point in which a firm earns profits when marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost it indicates profits and when marginal revenue is less than marginal cost it indicates or it means a loss uh, earning situation so this marginal revenue curve and marginal uh, marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost this is the condition observed here now for every individual line for every uh, individual market this is the point of intersection that is e here this is a point of intersection that is e so extend the line from this intersection point on both the sides touching the x axis touching the x axis and touching the average revenue line touching the x axis and touching the average revenue line so a, a dotted line is indicated here Uh, which falls perpendicular to the y axis in both the diagrams this indicates the price one which is in inelastic market and p2 is in a elastic market and p star is a combined market price and this a blocked region indicates the profits earned by the firm both in the inelastic market as well as the elastic market if you observe that if you observe that if the in the first market op1 is the price is more quantity consumed is less when in a uh, op1 here in the second market op2 is a lesser price comparative to the first market price and the quantity demanded is more here so this is oq star is a combined quantity demanded at p star p um, at a price in the combined market this is how it is analyzed the graphs are analyzed here right so if we try if we draw draw a line extending to the other markets we can see op1 high price is charged in market 1 and op2 low price is charged in the market 2 right that is it is elasticity as well as elastic market as well as a inelastic market regarding the next concept here is monopolistic competition monopolistic competition is that market structure where many companies offer similar products but not perfect substitutes the companies differentiate the products through pricing either through different prices or the product modifications or changes and another and other marketing strategies each firm acts as a monopolist and fix their own prices and the price output determination is same as a monopoly market structure with this i'll end up the session here thank you